Um, thank you so much for inviting me to be able to present um, not only what I think is one of the biggest challenge uh, humanity is facing in the coming years, but also the solution that we think and we're developing uh, might, might change and might bring a, well, a solution to this challenge. Um, so I'm going to talk about re rethinking antibiotics. Um, so I'm Xavier Bortem, I've just finished my PhD um, and I've co-founded this company called Phagex uh, with which we developed the technology to uh, tackle their antibiotic resistance. So as, as Gregory mentioned today, we have our microbiome. The microbiome uh, is basically all the bacteria that inhabit our, our body. Uh, and we have billions, trillions of them, way more than our own cells. And they have all kinds of shapes. You have round bacteria, you have rod-shaped bacteria, you have spirulae bacteria. It's an amazing world. But in this world, you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. So the human microbiome is our second self. And you have a lot of good bacteria there. Not all, bac not all bacteria are bad. Um, we are inhabited by bacteria that basically help us you know, digest, by bacteria that protect us against other pathogens, by bacteria that secrete some molecules that have an impact on how we think, how we behave, prevent depressions. So we are, and we're just discovering this field right now. But you also have the bad, and I guess you're more, most, more familiar with the bad bacteria. Um, you know, bacteria that basically cause infections, and you have lung infections, you have um, skin infection with the very bad flesh disease, flesh eating bacteria. And the problem today is that when you have an infection, well, the only way to treat it is with antibiotics. And antibiotics today, what they are, basically they're just like a nuclear bomb. They will kill all the bacteria, not only the ones that are bad, not only the ones that are causing the infections, but also your whole microbiome. And this has a huge impact. Not only for you, it has many side effects, basically that, uh, you know, if you take strong dose of antibiotics, how many of you got you know, a diarrhea, diarrhea or, or belly ache afterwards because you basically just killed the whole bacteria in your belly. But more importantly, <coughs> uh, more than just having these small side effects, they also create resistance to antibiotics. And so if you look at, you have a, a typical population of bacteria um, and you have billions of these bacteria. And so uh, as Gregory mentioned, so in these bacteria, uh, these bacteria are living organisms that evolve, their genome is evolving and among all the bacteria that inhabit us, you have some which have certain mutation which make them resistant to antibiotics. But even if they're resistant to antibiotics, they doesn't mean that they will kill you, that they will uh, basically create a disease. But they, will, they are here. So when you have a disease and you, and you use one antibiotic to get rid of the infection, then uh, the bacteria, the resistant bacteria in red, will survive basically the, 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 the antibiotic treatment. And then because all the other bacteria have been washed away, the antibiotic resistant bacteria will, will, will be able to, to thrive and occupy the whole niche. And then uh, basically you will be colonized with only resistant bac antibiotic res uh, bacteria. And then if you get another infection, then this bacteria will be the infectious one and you won't be able to get rid of it. And the nasty thing about antibiotic resistance is also that these bacteria, the resistant ones, well, they can transfer the resistance to non-resistant bacteria. And this is, this is happening a lot in, in the body. And so this is the ugly, the resistant one. They are the ugly microbiome. Today, um, so it might not seem you know, huge, but the problem is that it's, it's just increasing so fast. Uh, about two million people in the world today are infected by resistant bacteria. Out of these two million people, <coughs> sorry, you only have 60,000 that die, who die. Uh, but also, this is causing billions of dollars in, in excess healthcare, uh, healthcare costs. So the problem is that these numbers are small today, but they're increasing. And I think you know a lot of people are, are starting to see that. Uh, um, a few weeks ago, President Obama gave an executive order to rethink about new antibiotics. Uh, the CDC, the WHO, uh, World Health Organization, they've raised concerns and they're trying to fix that. But um, so, and the problem is basically that this, this, this graph tells you what the problem is, is that uh, the resistance has started to emerge uh, in, in, the, in, in the 80s. So these are uh, three major pathogens, the Staphylococcus aureus, resistant, multi-resistant one, the enterococcus, and the, some, some, some uh, quinolone resistant one. And so you can see that it, it's increasing pretty fast. And um, the problem is not only that they're increasing, but also that the number of antibiotics that are approved by the FDA, by the authorities, every year is completely decreasing. And so we are facing a huge problem. We're getting so many bugs that are resistant, we cannot treat. And at the same time, no one is you know, developing uh, drugs that are approved by, by, to, to, to treat the patients. 
Um, and then it gets pretty scary if you think, so this is where just one resistance, but bacteria can become multi-resistant, resistant to multiple drugs. And so um, this is a simple uh, um, you know, um, uh, map showing the evolution in, in Europe of um, the multi-resistant Klebsiella, which is a major pathogen, a gut pathogen. And so this is just in less than 10 years. Um, you see the red countries uh, are countries where when patient goes to the hospital, he basically, um, you know, is, you, you kind of sequence his microbiome and you see which bacteria are resistant or not. And when it's red, it means that more than 50% of the patients that go to the hospital are colonized by this bad, bad multi-resistant bacteria. And in less than 10 years, you can see that you have more than 12 countries in Europe that got more than 50% of the people uh, colonized by this bacteria. Um, the same in the US, um, you, and this is not, so this graph is not about colonization, but it's about infection. So 5% in 2000, uh, in 2000, 5% of infections by acinobacteria, which is also a very bad bug, um, was, was, uh, was across the US. And in nine years, uh, we got up to 40% of the infections. And this is really bad. So um, basically you have to think, and this is what we thought, you know, how can we create new antibiotics that will not create such resistance and what, that would basically be able to manage the rate of resistance, antibiotic resistance. Um, and we, we decided to focus on this, on this subject because, um, you know, as I said, a lot of people are really worried about that. Uh, so this is just a, a, a very strong statement from um, one of the big guys at the World Health Organization, which says that basically if it continues like that in 10 years, when you have to you know, get to the dentist uh, or get a, a, you know, a replacement, a bone replacement or a simple surgery, you will not be able to do that because if we can do this today, it's because as soon as you get surgery, we give you antibiotics. If we don't have the antibiotics to prevent the infection because when we cut you open, bacteria get in, then we won't be able to, to, to give you a surgery. <laughs> so our approach is pretty, it's, it's, well, it's pretty simple. Um, we decided to focus on not creating a nuclear bomb, a new nuclear bomb, but just basically create a new way to target very specifically the bad bacteria and only kill these bacteria. And we're doing this, and we, we're, we, we've, been, we've been showing the technology work by reprogramming the living, doing synthetic biology. So, um, so this is Phagex, and um, the technology we're developing is called Eligobiotics. Eligo in Latin means to choose, to select. So we're creating a new, like, smart antibiotics. Uh, which will be able, to, which will allow us to engineer the microbiome by just getting rid of the bad bacteria while leaving the rest completely intact. So how we do that? Um, we decided to look in what was already existing at um, a virus, which is a virus that only attacks bacteria. It's called a phage. Um, it doesn't enter mammalian cells, so we have virus like HIV and stuff, and the bacteria, they have their own viruses. So this is a phage, and what a phage does naturally it basically is like a virus. It just finds bacteria, injects in its DNA into the bacteria, reproduce in the bacteria, and just kill the bacteria by making the bacteria explode. And then you have lots of new vi variants that will be able to infect other bacteria. But what we decided to do is that this, this is still quite a nuclear bomb because you put one of this, of, of, of this, of this uh, phage and it will just get in bacteria, reproduce, and then uh, kill all the other ones. So this is not what we wanted to do. We use this, um, this, this parasite, just one of the quality of these parasites, to be able to inject DNA in the bacteria. And what we did is that we got rid of the back of this parasite genome, and we, instead of the genome, we reprogrammed it, and we put, it, we put within the, the, the capsid, just a vector to, to deliver DNA, a completely synthetic DNA. And what, why for? Uh, basically, this synthetic DNA, we can program it to express a protein that will scan <coughs> the whole genome of the bacteria, and if we program the, the protein well, it can find, we can ask it to look through within the genome for specific DNA sequences, like uh, a, a sequence of a resistant gene, a sequence of a virulence genes. And if, basically, the, the proteins find this, find this sequence in the genome, then the protein is programmed to cut the genome. And when you cut, when you create a double strand break in the genome of a bacteria, the bacteria cannot repair the genome, and then the bacteria dies. And so we have shown that basically we could do that on a lot of different uh, pathogenic bacteria. Uh, so these are just an um, um, example from a paper we published a month ago on Staphylococcus aureus, a, 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 a US strain, a very virulent strain resistant to many antibiotics. And what we've done is that we've colonized a, a mice, a poor mice, with uh, some resistant bacteria and non-resistant bacteria. 
And then, so you can see that the resistant bacteria basically are the, are the, 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 the fluorescent one, and we have a mix of 50%, 50%. And once we apply our solution with our, our oligobiotics, basically we got rid of most of the resistant ones. And you can see that what is pretty nice is that not only we got rid of the, of the bad ones, but the good ones just occupy, I mean, reoccupy the whole niche and preventing the bad ones that are still there because you always have some, you never kill 100%. But if you have only less than, you know, now we have, uh, this is 2.8%, but now we go, to, we go down to 0.4%, well, you always stay with this 0.4%. It cannot grow back because you have the good one that are still here. And so if you think about, um, you know, what are the potentiality of such a technology, the potential of the technology, it goes actually way beyond uh, uh, the just killing resistant bacteria. Um, so we have, we, we have demonstrated in our paper, and now we're developing with, with the company, the decolonization of resistant bacteria for like, um, you know, Staphylococcus aureus, some Clostridium difficile strains, some very bad strains, mostly in your gut and on, or on your skin. Uh, but you can also think about, um, you know, with all the new sequencing uh, data that are being generated, we get to know more and more about how the microbiome we have impact our health. And we're discovering that specific bacteria, which are not specifically virulent or, or, or resistant or dangerous, if you have this, part of this specific bacteria, then you, know, you can generate autism. Like when kids have one particular strain of bacteria between six months and two years, well, you increase the chance of uh, getting an autistic kid by you know, 40%, 60%. Uh, the same for obesity, you know, if we have, uh, uh, we're just discovering that if you have specific bacteria in your body, well, people tend to be, to not digest the same way uh, the, nu the nutrients and get obese way faster. And so it, it, links, it links with a lot of different uh, metabolic disease. And with our strategy, as soon as we can sequence what is the bug you have inside your gut, then in two days we can create, uh, uh, we can reprogram just by synthesizing the DNA, our synthetic circuit, putting it into the capsid, the phage capsid, and create something to, to decolonize your whole body of, of the bacteria that is causing uh, the, the bad disease for you. Um, we're also working um, on, on biodefense application because with this, with, the, with this technology, you can basically disarm any potentially harmful bacteria that has been uh, uh, designed by uh, uh, you know, terrorists or whatever. Um, and the nice thing also about this technology is that we tweaked it a little bit so that not only um, you can use it to cleave the DNA and kill the bacteria, but if we mutate the protein that is you know, scanning the genome, we can prevent it from cleaving the DNA, but making it just stick really hard to the sequence it's targeting. And when it sticks to the sequence, then you don't kill the bacteria, but you can basically completely uh, um, control the expression, the gene expression of the bacteria. So if you want to turn one gene off, you just use the mutated version of the protein and target it to the sequence, and then the gene will be off. And this has also tremendous uh, application, not only in therapeutics, but also in cosmetics. In therapeutics, you could imagine that, um, you know, when you have a drug, when you eat drug, I mean, when you ingest a drug, um, very often, the drug is metabolized, is, is, is eaten up by the bacteria you have in your gut. And so only a very little portion of, of, of the drug that you eat actually goes through your intestine uh, membrane and have an effect. And so what we can do and what we're working on is actually we know the metabolism, we know the genes in, your bacteria, in the bacteria in your gut that are responsible of chewing up the drug. And so we can just shut down these genes with this technology and have way more efficient drug. At the same time, we're working now and we're discussing with, with, in, with industrials to, um, to work on body odor. So this might sound funny, but if you, if, if you stink, if you smell under the armpit, it's basically because the bacteria you have there are producing some proteins that are degrading um, the secretions under your armpit and they're making them stinky. And so what we're doing right now is we're creating an oligobiotic to shut down the expression of these genes in the bacteria below your armpits. Um, this is a, 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 a funny project. Um, and so basically, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of you know, how you can change the way we're tackling, dealing with the microbiome, dealing with the, uh, uh, the, the resistance in some case, by basically um, becoming a really personalized uh, technology that could have an impact on not only your health, but also um, a lot of different ways of uh, behavior. Thank you so much.